Nmap might be described as a really powerful open source network scanning tool, but that doesn't really do it enough justice. It's really powerful. Entire penetration tests and professional level engagements can be completed with Nmap. Certifications can be completed using Nmap. It's definitely one of the best tools we have in our kit for scanning network hosts, services, and identifying vulnerabilities on network. And it's free and open source. Oh, and not to mention good enough for Trinity and the Matrix to use it to hack our way into the city power grid by identifying a vulnerable SSH server and then firing an exploit at it. So with that, let's jump in and get a handle on what Nmap actually is. Running Nmap against a target IP address by default will conduct a default TCP scan on the most common 1000 ports to identify which ones are open, closed, or filtered. And we may get an error at times as well too if we run it like this. And that's because Nmap starts off by pinging a host. You remember earlier on in that lab when I said it might be blocked by a firewall or something? That can happen at times. So we need to go ahead sometimes if we get an error like this and run nmap tac capital PN as suggested against an IP. Okay, cool. So this is a basic nmap scan. And from here, we now know what ports and services the host is running. Let's review this output a little bit. On the left, we have ports. Then we have their state. Then we have their service. And it's fast too. Look at that time, four and a half seconds. That's not long at all. Nmap makes its best guess at what the port and service is based on the activity it observes when interacting with the port. That's pretty neat. And well, Nmap isn't even in its final form yet. So let's see what else it can do. Now that we know what ports are available, we can zero in on a specific port by using the TACP flag and choosing 22, so SSH in this case, and we can drill down on this port even further, all in a manner of 0.05 seconds as well. So let's do an SSH port scan on our network of hosts here inside of our range. And we can scan multiple hosts at once in two ways. We can specify from the last host bit up to the maximum host bit that we'd like. So maybe dot zero to dot 10. And there we go. We've now performed an SSH scan on our network. That's super cool. We can even actually scan by CIDR notation, and that's a lot easier. So if we just throw in like a slash 24 subnet instead and just fire away at the subnet, well, we can do that too. Cool, just like that, 3.3 seconds. So if we want to map out all the hosts in a network offering SSH services, that's all we need to do, just like that. We can even do larger port scans. And in order to make that effective sometimes, we can adjust the timing. So if we look inside of the man page for Nmap and scroll down, we're going to see that we can actually adjust the timer. And there's a timing speed inside of Nmap. If we keep searching for attack capital T, we'll come across a section that explains the five different timing modes. There's paranoid, not making a sound, sneaky, polite, normal, aggressive, and insane timing. And the faster you go, the more noise it makes and the less accurate it is, but it can get the job done. And sometimes you want to go low and slow and just do a short low and slow scan to identify things very accurately. So that's where timing comes into play. In our case, let's do a port scan from ports one to 10,000. So that's going into the ephemeral port range. And let's go and increase the speed up to T5. So insane speed against our Windows host. And this one will take a little bit more time. So if we'd like, we can always hit enter and get a status update. And it'll let us know roughly the estimated time left on the scan. So we can see four more seconds, hit it again, one second. Okay, good, 13.3 seconds. We actually expose another port now, 5985. That wasn't there before. So you see, you can do deeper scanning and get more information from a host over and over and over again. Okay, so let's actually step it up a little bit now and we can do more with Nmap. We can scan for operating system detection, versions, script scanning, and basic vulnerability scanning. All we need to do is throw on attack capital A option. So let's scan the host now with that. And expect this scan to take a little bit longer. I'm going to pause my recording here and then kick it back in once it completes. Should be close to a minute. Cool, okay, so that's a lot more output. We actually get some in-depth metadata per service now. 
we get some NetBIOS information, DNS, and even the version of SMB used. And notice that the SMB portion came from the vulnerability scanning portion because we can see that we have some information about the security mode. And we can do that next. We can actually scan just for vulnerabilities by throwing in another flag, and we'll do that in a moment. Now, these scripts that we want to include are all on our system, actually. They're called .nse extension files, and that stands for Nmap Scripting Engine. So let's use a new command. Let's use the locate command, and we can actually locate commands by extension type. So if we did a locate star attack NSE, it'll show exactly on disk where everything is located. And that's a lot of scripts. So let's pipe that over inside of less and just kind of skim through it so we can see. And you can see just how much Nmap actually scans for. These are all vulnerabilities. Searching for SMB indicates all the scripts that it looks for. We see some public vulnerabilities inside there as well too. In fact, let's actually vim into one of these files and see what they look like under the hood. And don't worry, they're going to be a little complex. There's a lot of code, but we can actually see the magnitude of what's going on inside them. So let's vim into the user share nmap scripts. And then we'll look at the SMB vulnerability for ms 17 tac 10 nsc and this is an example of one of the Nmap scripting engine scripts. And we can see with some description that this is actually scanning for the eternal blue vulnerability on an endpoint. And if we kind of look through the rest of the code here, we'll be able to see just how Nmap works. And this output is what we actually will see on the terminal, kind of like when we saw the security mode being displayed to us. So that's like the human readable portion. But then we get into the actual nitty gritty code itself. And you can see how this all works over here. There's some functions, some if statements. So if you do want to kind of skim underneath the hood and see how that's functioned, go ahead, but don't put too much pressure on yourself to be able to understand it. So before we hop out from the script, there's one thing I want to highlight, and that's the categories tag. If we look at it, we can see it says vuln and safe. So we can specify scanning for vuln scripts, but by default, Nmap scans with its default category. So let's get a sense of what are all the default scripts. First, we need to grep through each file and look for that categories line. So we'll do that through the whole directory where all the NSC scripts live, and it's gonna give us a huge output. So good, you can see all the different categories, but let's actually pipe this now and then grep further for the default category of scripts. Let's do that once more. Cool, so we can see now these are all the actual default scripts that we run when we run something like attack A, or attack S capital C, all of these scripts get ran against the target. And so if we wanted to include a script like that eternal blue vulnerability, we would have to specify it further by the tag of vuln. And we need to input another flag inside of the nmap script statement, where it's tag tag script equals, and then we can specify each category of tag that we would like. So if we did default comma vuln, and then scan that against a target, we're now going to scan with all the vulnerability based scripts. So let's do something kind of cool actually, and instead let's do a vulnerability scan against us, our local host, so that we can deliver a fancy report to someone giving a full vulnerability scan. And I'm also going to throw in an additional flag here of TAC O capital A. And what this does is it allows us to record a saved file of all the scans we just performed in multiple formats. And this is what will allow us to create a report based out of our scans. So let's call the file name like localhost vuln scan and then run it against localhost itself. And this will take a minute or so, so I'll cut the recording here and come back in when it's complete. Okay, back, and it looks like we're done. We have a full scan delivered for us and it looks like it actually did highlight a vulnerability. And that's kind of cool. This might actually give you a little bit of a adrenaline rush that you identified a vulnerability. So before we get too excited, don't worry too much here that this specific vulnerability is not the most impactful. And further reading from this MITRE link here will give you a bit of an idea about what it actually does. But a brief description above suggests that it's a denial of service attack against the port that we have open. And this is a private range. It's only accessible to you. There's nothing to really deny service wise. And we'll get more into that in the cybersecurity section where we start to get an understanding of what risk actually is. How do we describe it? How do we mitigate it? and how do we classify it as something of a low, medium, or high priority and such. And that's really where cybersecurity comes in, is to give some context to this type of information. 
Cool. So we did record the scan. We don't have to worry about losing it on the terminal. If we look in our directory right now, run a little ls, we can see what it actually outputted. We have several files of our scan report. And the dot nmap scan is exactly what we saw before if we need a quick terminal reference to go back and forth on. And what we want to do is actually take this nmap file, I'll cat that once more and actually highlight it. I want to get all of this information that is stored inside of the XML file and convert that to an HTML readable file. And in order to do that, we need to run a tool. And there are many tools to do this. We have one in the system over here, xsltproc. And this is taking in an XML file and then outputting it as an HTML file. And there are many tools to do this. This is just one and it's quick and easy. So let's do that now. So pretty fast, completed right away. Run an ls, there it is inside of the directory. Let's open it up now from the file manager. If we right click the file and then open with Firefox, we'll get a nice, lovely report to read. So this is pretty cool, right? We've taken an nmap scan, we've converted the XML file, and this is a basic vulnerability scan. We just ran it against our local host. So we can actually do a vulnerability scan against another target and then give someone a basic report like this and explain what's happening underneath it. Now, granted, we have to get a little bit of cybersecurity knowledge and understand what these vulnerabilities do and be able to provide some context. But as you can see, Nmap out of the gates is actually a really powerful tool. It can do a full scan, give you a nice report after with some conversion, and it can look for some of the most common and most dangerous vulnerabilities with ease. Not to mention it's free and fast. And so there's a reason this is such a popular tool.